Uh, okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before we start, maybe is there any questions before from last week? I think last week we uh, we moved on to uh, derivative, the introduction to derivative, but it's still on uh, chapter two. But this is going to be introduction of derivative. So if, if we look on the form, the this form here. Okay. Oh wait, I need to. Um, okay. okay, so we conclude that when we have a definition for our uh, derivative as limit, as h is going to be zero, f a plus h minus f of a over h. And we know that a is a number that we set in our graphs, right? Now, actually, we can set the a as another variable x. Okay? So we can have our um, derivative as a function. So we are not saying that, uh, because in limit, if you remember, we develop the definitions through some value a, right? But now we develop the definition for variable x. So we can have our derivative as a function. Okay, we have the f prime x. And we kind of uh, develop how we observe the graph. Okay? If we go down here, or maybe let me go to the new page to, to give you the full graphs that I have. Uh, this one. Okay. This is according to the textbook. So if you see, the top one is function f. Or maybe let me. Is there any? Let me write. This is f. Or this is f of x. Okay. And the bottom one is f prime x. Okay. This is precisely the same from last week. What I want to emphasize is uh, it goes by uh, its precise uh, slope. Uh, for example, at A, it goes by uh, the slope is negative 1. So it's negative. So it means that if we develop a new graph based on F prime, which is negative, we are going to start below here because this is the negative domain, right? So we start from here, okay? So, and we are not really sure where is it because we need to later we going to develop um, a method to uh, to exactly uh, pinpoint uh, the positions for for the derivative. Okay, but 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 for now we can just roughly guess and assume. Okay, probably around here. Okay, probably around here, and then it's going to be equal to zero at b which means it's going to cross this uh, x-axis, right? Because it's going to be 0 here. Okay. So it's b prime. And then c, well, it's going to go around slope 1. So it's going to be here, which means that it's a positive uh, function. And then go down again to make it 0. And I give you some hint why this point C becomes the maximum value, okay? If you still remember, I mentioned that from zero, okay, from zero, it goes plus, right? But from one to zero, it goes down. But it's still positive, right? It's still positive. So increasing, decreasing. So increasing, decreasing, okay? I hope you get the logic here, okay? Now, d prime gets 0, the slope is 0, and then the uh, p is going to uh, decrease, it's going down, so it's going to be in a negative value here, and perhaps at some point here, maybe around here, it goes 
minimum value because it's decreasing but from here to maybe zero here it's going to increase a little bit right but it's still still going down but it's increasing okay so that's why it has the minimum value okay so that's maximum and minimum value as uh, just at a glance okay not really details but uh, we are going to learn more uh, later on. Okay. Okay, now if we are uh, going to, for example, if I have the, the functions x cubed minus x, okay, based on the definition from the limit, okay, if we want to take down the uh, the f prime x, okay. Let me let me just uh, give you this note. So if we have the limit, so we are not yet going to use the the derivative yet. But let's start using this limit definitions to. To, to check the f prime, okay. So we are going to put all the functions. So this will be x plus h cube minus x cube. Oh, minus x plus h. Sorry. Okay. And then minus is going to be x cube minus x okay okay one tips for you every time you go uh, to avoid mistake on signs like positive negative uh, try as much as possible using the bracket to, to avoid mistake but if you if you're already familiar I think it's okay but if not uh, I think giving brackets will help so I think I'm going to give here also to make it more uh, clear. So then we start to take sometimes, take sometimes slowly uh, expand the equation. So x cubed plus 3x h squared plus 3x squared h plus h cubed and minus x minus h minus x cubed plus x okay so this will be cancel this will be cancel what else need to be cancel okay i think okay okay and then we write down the results i think too long Maybe I will erase a little bit here. Three x, three x squared plus three x h plus h squared minus one. Okay, and then we cancel h. And then plug in zero inside for h. So this will be zero. This will be zero. So finally, we get 3x squared minus 1. OK. Any question from here? Okay, maybe you can take slowly from the start here. Okay. So limit definitions, the idea, okay, if you are going to use this for your derivative is uh, just change the, uh, so you have f of x plus h. So you just need to plug in x plus h to the function. The function is this, x cubed minus x. So you need to plug in x plus h, go here, then you have this, this, and then f of x is the same as this, and you just write the function, okay? And then 
uh, a little bit expansions and try to simplify it through some algebra. And finally, you will get that uh, there is some h that can be factorized on the numerator. Yeah, then you can cancel the h again. Okay. And mostly, mostly the uh, if you see any polynomial like like this function here. Mostly, the idea for the limit is to uh, to find out or to factor out the h so that you can cancel this top h and this, this uh, number, uh, denominator h. That's mostly that happens in the definition. Okay. Okay. So before you are using the tools derivative as we know, this is uh, the process inside. Okay, just to uh, as I, just to remind you how <laughs> how the inside, okay, how the process is. Okay, now before we go to uh, to the techniques of derivative, uh, let's observe the function and also the result okay, in a graph okay, in a graph to see uh, how does this uh, takes on okay, the, in, visually. Okay, let me uh, maybe uh, on the right side. Uh, I think I think this. Okay. So this is the x cubed minus x. Maybe let me also draw or write down. And this will be f prime. Okay. Now, if we start from the f, we start to looking at the slope positive. Okay, so it means it starts from the positive domain for the derivative, right? And then we m might have at this maximum value. The slope is zero, and the minimum value also is zero. So we are expecting at this x equals something here, it's going to be uh, crossing the x-axis, which we have clearly see here. Okay. So we start from the positive domain, and going down, crossing this x-axis when the slope is zero, and it's still going down. It's still going down, and it's become negative slope. Okay. It's become negative slope here. But then at certain point, at certain point, maybe at the x equals 0, it's going to increasing. Okay? It's going to increasing, although it's still in negative domain, right? Well, which we see here. It's going to increasing here. Okay? And then after that, we have this uh, slope 0 again here. And moving here, crossing the x-axis. Okay? And then going positive all the time. Okay, so I think uh, if you see any graphs, maybe in some questions, exam, or any 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 problem set you find in your textbook, uh, please look at the details whether the graphs is telling you the f or f prime or even f double prime. Okay, the, the second derivative. Okay, be 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 careful uh, when you uh, read the graph. Okay? Because sometimes we uh, we are so familiar with the f's, we thought that it's the function f, but maybe it's maybe f prime. So you have to be careful. Okay. Okay. After the, this page, after this page, uh, I think we can go through some uh, some proof for derivative. Okay. Maybe some notes first. How to uh, to write the, the the tools, the derivative symbols, okay, um, and then after that we go to the uh, the derivative itself, okay. Okay. Maybe any questions? No. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me 
uh, give you notes for some uh, notations first, okay, for, for derivatives. Uh, so notations. So usually we, we write derivative as this, right? Notation for derivative. So usually we, we write f with some accent, one accent we call f prime or f accent, it, it's also fine. Or even we call with, with y with accent one like that, we call y prime. Or, or we write with dy over dx. So uh, the tools is the ddx, okay? this is the tools. So if we want to write uh, the derivative, we call this d over dx as a derivative tools. So we read this as uh, we derive something here. It can be f, y, any, any functions that can be possible to, to derive. We derive this f with respect to x, okay? That's, that's how it is. Okay. Or maybe um, sometimes we are using this d with, with capital and then d f of x. This is also we call the derivative. Uh, or even we can write also d with, uh, with sub x and then f of x. This is also the same thing, okay, the same thing. And actually the dy over dx, okay, dy over dx, we can also write this uh, in terms of, if we remember the limit, this is actually the same thing. Okay. We call the d, the d here, uh, this is called the Leibniz notation, uh, Leib, Leibniz notation. Okay. So, so this semester, um, our calculus class, we only focus on we call a single variable calculus. Okay, single variable calculus. So we are only looking at y equal f of x. So only only one independent variable, okay? So, so I'm going to write here to give you an uh, overview. So we call this a single variable calculus, okay? Which means we are only focus, only focus on y equal f of x. Okay. This is the focus, okay? Next calculus, the calculus two, we call multivariable calculus. So this, the, the independent variable more than one. Before now, the independent variable only one. Usually we call the, this x. Okay. So only one. Only one independent variable okay so even though even though maybe at some point uh, when we learn about derivative we learn that maybe we have more than one single variable but we still treat all the equations with a single variable calculus okay and we call them later on with the implicit uh, differentiation and, and so on Okay, this is just for notes. Okay, notes before we go to the uh, derivative. And sometimes if we compute the derivative at some point of x, some value of x, we can also write, we can also write uh, dy over dx like this, and then take line and then write x equal a, which means this is derivative, the first derivative at x equal a. So you can uh, plug in a into your equation or any value you can compute. So this vertical bar, this vertical bar 
is a notion that you need to evaluate at x equal a. Okay. Now, before we learn the techniques, of course, we need to define first uh, what kind of function that can be differentiable. That's uh, I think important before we go more for details in the techniques. Okay. So that will be our discussion. Okay. Okay, maybe I will write down here a little bit. So let me write the definition. The definition first. So a function, let's say function f, is differentiable. differentiable at at a if i uh, if f prime a exists it is differentiable on open interval a b well it's also okay if you write uh, from uh, from a to infinity or from negative infinity to a or you can write negative infinity and infinity. This is just to say that it will be or it is differentiable at every number in the interval. So first, this is the definition, which means, okay, you can say the function is differentiable if the f prime at the point A exists. Okay, so we can say the function is differentiable at A. And because of that, it is differentiable for any open interval. You can say from A to B, or from A to infinity, or from negative infinity to A, or from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, for, for every uh, open interval, you can say it will be differentiable mm -hmm. at every number. Okay. So the key, the key is to prove this f prime exists. Okay, this is the key. Okay, the key. Now, how to prove this f prime exists? To prove that, we go back to the limit definition for the f prime. Okay. This x plus h minus f of x divided h. Uh, we need to prove that exists. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm giving you one example, okay, one example to see how this definition works. So example, the question is, is f of x differentiable at every point? Okay. There are there are two ways to see this f of x uh, with absolute value okay, of x. The first can we can graph and then make some conclusions. But for our definition here, I think we better to prove with our formulations and then we can compare to the graph. Okay. So first, let's see whether the f prime at some point exists, okay? Okay, remember the absolute value, it can have x as a positive x, or, or maybe let me write it more clear. It can be x and can be negative x, right? This is for x positive. This is for x uh, negative, or maybe positive uh, for equal. Well, let's let's, let's just take positive and negative. So, um, for x is positive, okay. The absolute value of x is equal to x, okay. Then we have, as our definition, let me, let me write first the definition. That's bad. Okay. So we are going to have x plus h minus x right and then over over h and of course we simply get that this will be equal to one okay okay now if we have the negative what we have is we are going to have negative x right then the f prime This will be minus x plus h and then minus minus x. Now what would happen here is we have negative x, negative h plus x over h. Okay? And we cancel this negative x and x. So we have negative one. Okay, now we have different value, a okay, different value, negative one and one. So, so if you have x positive, we can differentiate. When you have x negative, you also can differentiate. Okay, but now the question is, we need to also observe when it's equal zero, and that will be probably our clue. If we look at the graph of the absolute value of x, we have this, right? So maybe we need to observe when x is equal to zero. Okay? What happened with this, um, uh, the limit definition, okay? So let me write here uh, for x equal zero, okay? 
we need to check. So let's use our definition at x equals zero for the limit of derivative. Okay. So we write limit s h close to zero f then this will be zero plus h minus f zero okay. and then divide by h and of course because the function is absolute let me write with the absolute first and then we can we can um, check so we write zero plus h minus absolute zero divide by h absolute zero is just zero zero plus h is just h which means that this will left us with absolute value of h divided by h okay this is if if the limit exists if limit exists okay right, let me let me write one by one okay okay so first we know if it's positive negative we know the value before x equals 0 we need to investigate more okay when we have limit as h goes to 0 it still has absolute value of h over h what can we do to check what can we do uh, what, what what will we do after this what need, what we need to check We still have the absolute value, right? Okay, the absolute value. Now, how to know the absolute value? Which one is which? And we have the limit. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to check from the left, from the right, the limit, the right hand limit and left hand limit. Okay. So that let let's check whether it exists or not. Because I I've right here if limit exists, we can okay this is our our guess. But then we need to prove whether it exists or not. Okay, so so let's do that. So, so then compute uh, left left hand limit and right hand limit. So maybe start from right hand. Okay, from the right, limit from the right. From the right, it's a positive, so we can write the absolute value of h as just h. So we are having one. Okay. And then left hand limit. It's negative h, which results in negative 1. Remember, if we have different value of this limit, right hand limit is not equal left hand, the limit is does not exist, which means at x equals 0, it's not differentiable. <laughs> okay. So uh, maybe write, maybe let me write here. I hope it still can be clearly see. Let me just uh, add notes here. Uh, since this limit are different, then f prime zero does not exist. Uh, maybe let me write, let me make this a little bit higher, a little bit so that I can move this to here, okay, hope, and move this a little bit higher, okay. 
So as a conclusion, as a conclusion, F is differentiable at all x except zero, except x equal zero. So of course, if you have x, and well, if you uh, know how to, to derive, x derived becomes 1, right? But absolute value of x, it can be 1, it can be negative 1. But how about 0? That's uh, really difficult to think if, you, if we just think when we derive. But when we look at the proof, OK, it's not exist because different limit. And also, and also, if you draw the graph, you will notice something. Okay, you will notice something. If you draw, maybe I will draw uh, here. Okay, let me let me draw. Okay. Now, if we remember, what is derivative about? Derivative is about the slope of the curve, right? If you see here, this is already the slope. It's already straight line. Okay. This is also straight line. If we zoom in for this one, can we know at x equals zero? Is it negative? Is it positive? Or is it zero? We cannot figure it out, right? Because it's like this. Is it going down or is it going up? We, we are not sure. Okay? That's the, the logical reasoning from the graph. Okay? We don't know if it's going, uh, going up here or going down. And then when we prove with the limit, the limit is, is not exist at x, at x equals 0. Okay? So every time you have a graph and you see it at, at like a corner, like a tip corner, it means that it's not differentiable at that point. Okay? Every time you see like a tip corner like this, then it's not differentiable. Okay? And also, and also is this continuous? The absolute value of x continuous? Yes, right? Continuous. But it's not differentiable here, right? So that's, you need to be careful. So this will give a new theorem. Every differentiable function should be continuous, OK? But not every continuous function is differentiable, OK? Let me, let me, let me write, OK, let me write. Continuous. Okay. So if I write, uh, or maybe let me write, um, not every continuous f at a is differentiable. 
is differentiable at A. Well, it's this, the English structure is weird, but yeah, I hope you understand what I mean. So the theorem is if it's differentiable, then it should be continuous. It should be continuous. But if it's continuous, it, it's not always differentiable. Okay, now another possibility for uh, functions to be fail to be differentiable uh, is this. Okay, so whenever you see, like you have a supposed to be a vertical tangent line, it means it's also fail to diff can fails to be differentiable. Okay. So uh, the vertical ten uh, the vertical tangent line vertical tangent line this is one limit as x approaching a. F prime, this will give you an infinite value. Well, it means the slope is getting increasing, increasing, increasing. And when you have this vertical, it's actually we, we are not sure how much is it. Okay, because when you have this straight line, if we need to compare the uh, y over x. It's going to be something over zero, which means the infinite value, right? So then this is also uh, f fails to be differentiable. Differentiable. Okay, so um, to conclude, um, I give you some, some short summary. The function will be fail to have the differentiable the, or differentiability when you have uh, the, the corner like the previous one, the vertical tangent, and of course, if you have discontinuity, it should be not differentiable. Okay, let me give you maybe down here. So it should be still can be observed. Let me put the graph. Okay. So a corner, discontinuity, and the vertical tangent. This three at this x equal a is fail to be differentiable. 
let me make it a little bit bigger. At least in physics, you already learned the kinematics, the velocity accelerations, right? Okay. So you know at least the second derivative. Okay. Okay, since we finished the chapter two, the limit, until this intro to derivative, then perhaps we are going to have another quiz. But I think uh, because we are a little bit late of schedule, so the quiz will also be online, but I will try to use another platform. I think it will be more convenient for you. Okay? You are not running out of each question like with time limit. <laughs> so I will make like several questions, but the time limit will be for all. So it should be okay. So because I think I think some students maybe it has some maybe good understanding for some concept, but maybe bad on on another hand. If I take well. Um, just using my estimations, maybe not really fit with your um, flexibility. But if I give you like in the whole uh, framework, I think it should be okay, right? Okay, we take a break. Okay, we go back to the class. If you feel you're too tired, you want to a little bit sleep for two, three minutes, it's okay, I won't disturb you. <laughs> it is okay, because, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you cannot really fight back, and it's, it's a normal thing, and you need to listen to your body, okay? Because if not, then you will not have a, a life balance, okay? because, uh, what I learned is when we live our life with balance, it means like healthy lifestyle and etc. exercise, we will have a really good life. But, but, but because our society, I think it's not healthy. That's why we affected by that. And that's why we feel maybe sometimes tired, sometimes um, not really feel okay. okay. That's I think because our society, either the air, maybe climate change, uh, etc. And that's, well, partly because of human also, right? We take too much, <coughs> capitalize ourselves too much, and that's what we, we've become. So I'm, I'm not really, uh, like, really mad or um, disturbed if you're sleeping. It's okay, because th that's that means that it is your body that tells you to just take sleep for a while, okay? Okay? 
that, that's okay for me it's okay okay we we go back to uh this differentiability okay now after this page we are go going to chapter three okay officially chapter three so we are going to go to the differentia differentiation rules okay But before that, just a note that uh, if we have, uh, we know that the y over the x is our first derivative, right? The derivative of y or of f. If we take another one, we take the d dx again for this first derivative, we will get the second derivative. If you learn physics, you learn the kinematics, velocity, accelerations, okay, that's the second derivative. So we can write this as uh, this symbols. Or if you want want to write in the um, more simple way, you could say y prime is the first derivative, right? And y double prime is your second derivative. And of course, if you derive more and more and more, it means that it will, you will get the third one, the fourth, and Usually we write, if we write with this accent, we will get the third one, this similar, but for the fourth one, we sometimes using this, or like that. Okay. Need to include the bracket, because if not, you will mistake this with the power. Okay. But this is derivative. Okay. Just, the, just, just a small note before we go to differentiation rules. So this is third derivative. This is fourth. Okay. Now let me start with this. Uh, maybe let me start with with the, the, the new page. Okay. This is just a uh, notes notes for uh, higher derivatives. Okay. okay. I hope I can. Get the new page. So we start with differentiation rule. This is the third chapter. Okay, let's start with if we have a function, but it's just contain only constant. Okay. So we start by taking the limit definition as usual. Okay. I, will, I will just write directly because it's going to be simple. Sorry. Now it's just c minus c because it's just only constant, then it could be a zero. Okay. So when you see the constant, you can directly get the result is zero. Okay, next is, uh, let, me, let me just write this first and then we can discuss. The functions equal x, uh, the functions equal uh, x squared. And I think, I think for x and x squared, in the, in the previous lesson, we already see. For x, from the absolute value, we see that it will require, uh, re uh, resulting in one, right? For f of x, if you take the same limit here, the x squared will get 2x, right? Okay. And the x cubed, I think from the previous one also, you get the uh, 3x squared, right? So I think we can write 
down some uh, cons conclusion. So we can have the f prime x is 1, f prime x is 2x, f prime x is 3x squared. Now, if you want to challenge yourself uh, trying to do this limit definition, let me make this. You can try x with power of 4 using limit definition if you would like to challenge yourself, but it will resulting the 4x cubed. Okay. Now, if we remember when maybe you learned the derivative in your high school, then it starts with, with some patterns, right? We have some patterns here. Then if we have this square with, with some n, n can be 2, 3, or 4, when we derive this n, we'll be coming to the front here. And this n as, at power will be minus 1, OK? So I think we can set up the, the formulations. And then we can later we can prove uh, how it, it could be true. Okay, let me write here. Then if you have d dx with x power of n, this will be n x n minus 1. This is for n. Actually, your textbooks start with the positive integer n. But I will write this is for all n uh, as a conclusion first. And then we can start to prove okay, later on. So if n is any real number. OK, now to prove this, okay, there is at least two proof, but let me just show you just one. Okay. Uh, remember that when you have an algebra, that's say x squared minus, uh, minus a squared, we could simply write x minus a and then x plus a, right? The algebra. When we have x cubed minus a cubed, if we factorize x minus a, this will be x squared plus uh, ax plus a squared, right? OK. And if you increase with 4, with 5, we could have our, um, our pattern. And we, when we have some n, and we still factorize the same thing, x minus a, this will result in x with power of n minus 1 plus x with power of n minus 2 and a, and then plus something, x and then a, n minus 2. And then plus a and minus one. Okay, we could have this. Okay, this is came from. Uh, so if you try four, five, you will see this middle part will have the um, combinations that the degree should be equal to two. So this is one, one, so it should be two. So if you have four, you have two, one, one, two. Okay. So a squared x, x squared a at the bottom. So you will have this combination here. So it is, it is, uh, it will uh, follows how many ends you have. Okay, you can try, try to input 
two, three, four, you will see the pattern. Okay? You will see the pattern that it's, it's actually true for all, for all n. Okay? Now, when we have this, okay, let's go to the definitions for the limit, okay? for the derivative of limit. So f prime a, we are going to use the uh, another form. Okay, so we have x going to close to a. We have f of x minus f of a and x minus a. Now, f of x is x with power of n. Okay. So we are going to exchange this x with power of n inside this limit. Okay. So that's why we need this structure to define ourselves. Okay, I think you could see why and how. So if we have this and divide by x minus a, it should be cancelled, right? So if we write down, if you write down, this will be limit okay, and then by taking limit we break down this x power of n minus a power of n as the above um, formulation. So x minus a And then we can cancel this out. Okay, now we are left with this. Okay. The next thing we have x closer to a. So let's substitute x with a. So we this become a, 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 a. Okay, let's do that. So this will be uh, equal to a with power of n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 a. Okay, let me just write that. And then plus a a n minus 2 plus a n minus 1. Now notice that this means this is a n minus one. Okay, this is also a n minus one. Okay, it means that the whole thing, how many of them, n. So we can simplify this with n multiply with a n minus one. Okay, that's that's how I think the the, the proof. Reproof is okay. so we can write down that this is going to be n a n minus one. There are another proof, but I think I will just stick with this one. Okay, just stick with this one. Okay. okay. Maybe to make some to notice that this is n times to make sure that we know where the n comes from. Okay. So this is going to be the first rules for differentiation, which you have x power n. You could derive and make n x n minus one. Okay. So let me maybe write on the right side just to make notes here. 
so ddx for any n real number why my structure is not good uh, maybe if n is any real number Okay, now we have this tool, and we can now use this tool. Okay. In previous chapter, we only see the limit definition. Now we can use <laughs> the the derivative tools. Okay. Okay. Okay, the next is uh, every time we have uh, a, a polynomial, okay? for example, um, x squared, x cubed, I think that should be okay. But let's try if we have like one over x, okay? I think it's still e easy, but if you are not familiar, you need to try, try, try this out, okay? Try this uh, derivative, okay? So we could take this as So we could say that this is, will be negative x and negative 2 or negative 1 over x squared. Okay. This is comes from, uh, if we take this minus 1 here, so the minus 1 going here, and then this will be adding another negative 1. Okay. So I hope you're already familiar with this. Okay. I hope. If not, then please uh, be familiar with this. Okay. Because... Uh, we will see a lot okay. and also if we have uh, the square root the square root of x okay if you are not familiar we could start with the power we can define the power as half okay we could start with writing the x with the power of half okay that's the square root right then we could say this will equal to half x it's minus one so it's minus half or we could see this form okay so this is going to be x half the half is going to the front and this will be minus one Okay. Okay, I think should be okay. Okay, now after we learn this constant and then the, the power rule, uh, do I have which is Oh, I think I don't have the graph. Okay, let me let me just write. So if I have uh, y equal f of x, if I take y equal to f of x, okay, if we multiply with a constant, remember that we have a transformation, right? We have a transformation. So if this graph, if we graph this. I just take maybe if this is your f of x, maybe your two f of x maybe here, right? Of course, if we look at the derivative, it will affect the the slope at each point, right? Okay. So if we take the the derivative. Of some constant of f 
we can simply say the constant is just a constant then we can factor out You can prove this as well using the limit definitions, but I don't think I will prove it to you. I think it's it's quite uh, obvious. Okay, another one is uh, if we have this the 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 sum, the sum and and also different because it's it goes the same way, the same structure. So we are going to have separations for both uh, addition and subtraction. Okay. This, I think, the proof is also obvious if you check with the limit definitions. You can check the limit definition using the, the new functions, maybe f, the capital F. This is f plus g, or f minus g, and then exchange to the limit definition. It will be very, very obvious. Not really um, difficult to tell. Okay. Okay, I think to end our class, one more section. The exponential functions. Okay, okay maybe any question from the previous one here, I think the constant, the constant multiple with functions, uh, the addition, subtraction. I think it's it's already pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. You can you can prove easily. Not not really difficult. Okay. The one that may be a little bit difficult is when you have this exponent, and maybe later when you have the sine or cosine, the trigonometric, metric, and the product rule and quotient rule. That's uh, that needs some time to prove. But I I, I need I need also some uh, sections maybe tomorrow we can see some of those uh, proving but let me start with the exponential functions okay let me start with the exponent so we can start with f of x well maybe taking some constant b uh, b is like for a base usually so b with power of x okay and we can start with the limit definitions for uh, derivative. So we could start with f prime x is limit. Okay, now we have b with power of x. So we have limit. Now the next thing is we can write the b power of x and b with power of h like that. Okay, and then we can factorize the b with power of x, and then we left with b power of h minus one and then over h. Now, from this limit, if we see this b with power of x, it doesn't depend on this h, so we can factor out from the limit, okay? So we can factor out.
Okay, now what will happen? We need to figure out what this is, right? Okay. Now, if we if we take the x x equals zero, so b with power zero is one, right? Okay. So we can say uh, maybe I will write here with a blue color, maybe blue, there, a light blue. So if we take this. We are going to have limit. So zero plus h is zero plus h. So should be b of power power of h, and then minus b with power of x x equals zero is one, right? And then divide by h. So it's actually our f prime zero. So we could say that this is going to be to be this. Okay, so so what what this what this means? Okay. So whenever we have an exponent, the result should also have its own original exponent. And multiply with something. And this this something that we need to define. Okay? But it's always proportional. It's always have this original equation. Let me let me write that notes first. Okay. So it means that this is a uh, rate of change of any exponential function is proportional to the function itself. So the slope is proportional to its height. So the, the proportional. Now the next thing we need to define this limit or this f prime zero or or perhaps this limit. Okay. okay, let's let's check b. Okay, b is a constant. B is a constant. It can be any number. But to give our narrow uh, narrow options, we could check b with maybe a constant two and three to see uh, at least some some value okay some value for for our limit here okay okay let, let I think I will uh, copy this to the next page so you don't lose your focus. So you can still write the notes. Let me let me write in the new page. So you still can write here. Okay, let me write here a little bit left and a little bit resize this a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's consider b is equal to and b is equal to 3 okay, and, and then make some value okay and then for h remember h is a, a small number that we can assign if we want to prove the limit if you remember what we have in limit we can assign h maybe 0 0.1 0 0.01 let's let's just try to see uh, the value here. So let's say this is h, and this is 2 with power of h minus 1 over h, and this is 3 a uh, power h minus 1 over h. Okay, so if we take, let's say 0 0.1, 
h is 0 0.1. So you could take 2 with power of 0 0.1 minus 1 and then over 0 0.1. And the same thing with this 3. And you can do also with your calculator if you want to prove this. This will result in 0 0.7177311.1. Six one uh, two three, okay. And then, in a short summary, let's try zero point zero 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 one. This is going to be zero point six nine three one seven. This is going to be zero point zero nine eight six seven. Okay. Now you'll notice that. When you have b equal 2 and b equal 3, the interval for the value is between 0 0.69 and 1.09. Okay? There is a number between 2 and 3. When you plug in here, it goes exactly 1. Okay? And that is the e. Okay? We can also see from, from here. So if we take, uh, let me write here, um, the conclusions. Let me write the conclusion first. So it seems, it seems when we have uh, d, dx with 2 power x, approximately we get 0 0.693. Okay, and then multiply with 2 power x, right? And when we have uh, 3 power x, it seems we have 1.09, let's say 9, and 3 power of x, okay? So we have 2 power x, 3 power x, and then multiply with some constant, okay? With some constant. So there exists there exists B which limit is equal one. This is the definition of E. So E, okay, let me write here, maybe maybe a little bit here. So E is the number such that Okay, so that's why when we have e power to the x, when we derive, it's still e power to the x. Because the constant is 1. Okay. Okay. So the constant here becomes 1. And E is around, uh, maybe here. E is a constant, 2.7818 something. And it's also, it's also true that it's between 2 and 3, right? between 2 and 3, but closer to 3. So it's 2.7. Because if you look at 3, it has 1.099. Right? It's close to 1.
So when you have a graph of e power x, if you check the graph itself, when you derive, it's the same original equation. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, let's insert one here. Ah, wrong color. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then we also need to define the number, the constant here is actually our ln, the, the log. Okay. So we have uh, d dx. Well, E is really unique number because we can see from this definitions. It also has another definitions, another perspective, another point of view. Uh, I think in calculus too, we also can see E can be derived from um, a series expansion. We could also get the same value as this. Uh, I would like to continue to the product rule and so on, but I think I will keep that for tomorrow's class. Okay, so I will stop until here. Uh, maybe any question first? Any thoughts or maybe discussion? Or maybe something missing? Okay. I think if you, uh, I think like I said last week, if you need to review your basic, you could always do that. You could always browse uh, for some website, uh, especially the one that I'm suggesting. If you would like to see the um, the basic one, especially for mathematics, you can go to the Khan Academy. That's for basic. If you go to a little bit more advanced, you go to um, I think I, I I give you several several um, at least you can you can look up in uh, YouTube. The uh, I think black pen, red pen, uh, the Dr. Trevor, but Dr. Trevor, I think, too advanced. And then the three brown, uh, uh, one, uh, one, three blue, one brown, I forgot, but that's my, uh, the YouTube channel. Or I think one YouTube channel also good. I think the name is Organic Chemistry, but he did many mathematics things. So. You could you could see the the organic chemistry tutor I think yeah if, but that is focused on uh, progressing in tutorial so like exercise exercise okay. one eight two eight right okay okay good good good. Okay, if there's no other question, we go to, as usual, go to the feedback questions, okay? This will be the intro to derivative, not really the chapter three, but it's like the, the, the intro one. I mean, still in limit, but the intro derivative one. Okay, I think I forgot two questions or three, maybe three, maybe three, maybe three. 
and short question. Short question. And short short time. <laughs> In a short Okay. Okay, our students uh, decreasing a little bit, maybe because of the rain. <laughs> okay, I think we can start, right? We can start. Okay, so Okay, so first get ready for the first question. Use your student ID so I can assign your name and your score. Okay, let's start. Uh, okay. Okay, I hope the time is the time is short, but I hope it's enough. Maybe it need to be two minutes, but two minutes, maybe three minutes. I hope you understand the question. You have five five numbers. You need to arrange from the lowest to highest. So arrange in increasing order. No need, no need for calculation, just looking at the graph. But remember, it's, it's the derivative. Okay, I think very good. So you could see from the slope, okay, going down, going up. Okay. okay. Who is the Android? Who? Is, who? Uh, I'm with the oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. If you can, if you have time to type, you can <laughs> type. Okay, and also Elsa, you can also type in. <laughs> Just an ID. Okay. Okay, get ready. Let's go. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay, less than one minute. Okay, from the graph, which one is not differentiable? And then you read the question. Okay, the, the question is total number 
for, for x value that is not differentiable. Okay, okay. Okay. So a negative one plus two is one. Okay. Okay. Okay, still tight. <laughs> okay, last one. Just a half mi half minute. <laughs> I hope you still remember what I said in I think in the middle of the class. <laughs> Okay. 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 I think you can just make sure the example is the absolute value of x. It's continuous, but not differentiable. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Good. Good. Who is the winner now? Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, good, good, really good. Okay, last one, as usual, uh, your student ID to just confirm that we end this class. And thank you for joining my class, okay? See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay.